In this video, we'll be looking again at calculating variances. This time, we'll go through direct material, direct labor, and overhead variances. So here's our scenario. The first few lines are standards that have been established for this organization. And then below it are the actual numbers, the actual number of units produced and sold, etc. Now the first thing we'll be looking at are direct material variances. The first one being price variance. So we're using the actual quantity and then we're using that to compare the actual price and the standard price. The actual quantity has been given to us in this problem. The standard price has been given to us. The actual price is something we have to calculate. So we take the actual cost of direct materials of 625,000 and we divide by the 350,000 pounds of direct materials used. That gets us an actual price of $1.79. So since we have actually spent, as far as price, a little less than what our standard was, we actually have a favorable per unit direct material price variance. For part B, the material quantity variance, we take the actual quantity and compare it to the standard quantity. And then we use the standard price in both calculations. Our standard price has been given to us. Our actual quantity has been given to us. Now we have to figure out what the standard quantity is. And that is the 180,000 units produced, and we multiply it by 2 pounds, which is the direct materials required, the standard, for producing one unit. So that gives us 360,000 pounds. So we actually used 350,000, but our standard is 360. So we used a little less quantity, and therefore we have a favorable materials quantity variance. The total direct material spending variance is the net of the direct material price variance and the direct material quantity variance. Both of those happen to be favorable. So overall, we have a favorable total spending variance. Now, one thing to notice, sometimes people are asked, you know, should you actually look into positive variances? And you should. You should always look into variances, no matter if they're uh, favorable or unfavorable. And the reason being, you want to understand why favorable variances are happening just as much as unfavorable ones. So, for instance, we could actually have switched suppliers. So, in the future, when we set standards, we may need to set a little, little lower. Or, perhaps we have found a a uh, better product to use as far as our production is concerned. Maybe we get more efficiency out of it and therefore we should change our standards next year. So all of this information is really important to find out. Next we'll look at labor rates and labor quantity. Quantity when it comes to labor is an efficiency variance. So the first thing that we do is we look at the actual rate versus the standard rate times the actual quantity. Our actual quantity of labor hours is 225000 Our standard price is $10 per hour, but our actual price is $3,100,000 spent on an actual number of labor hours worked of 225000 That gives us $13.78 per hour. That is an unfavorable variance because we, our actual rate is higher than what our standard rate is. Now, there could be all manner of reasons why that happened. Maybe you've got some labor that you had to pay for a little bit more for than you anticipated, and that's just the way it is sometimes. Some things can't be anticipated, but you'd still have to explain it. You'd have to come up with the reasons why you're actually paying $3.78 more than what you had planned. Then from a quantity, a labor hour standpoint, we're comparing 225,000 labor hours actually worked against the standard of 360,000. So 360,000 is the 180,000 units produced times a standard of two hours. So we multiply those by the standard price or the standard rate of $10, and we have spent a lot less in labor than what we had anticipated as far as quantity is concerned. So we have a very favorable labor efficiency rate variance. Now when we look at the total direct labor spending variance, the unfavorable one and the favorable one almost kind of wash each other out. So you could have looked at this total spending variance of 
And depending on materiality for your organization, that may or may not have been material to, to investigate. However, the fact of the matter remains is that sometimes you can have one that's really favorable and one that's really unfavorable, but you want to look at both in detail so that you can understand the effect of the rate versus the quantity. And you can see that playing out in this particular variance. And then finally, we look at the variable manufacturing overhead. Here, we're taking the actual quantity of 225,000 hours because we actually apply this variable overhead by labor hours. And we look at the actual price versus the standard price. Our standard price has been given to us as $1.50 per hour. The actual price, we actually have to figure that out. So our actual price is the 350,000 of actual variable overhead cost divided by 225,000 labor hours. When we look at this, our actual price is 156 compared to $1.50. So we've spent a little more per unit. So we have an unfavorable $12,500 of variable rate overhead variance. Now, when we go to overhead efficiency, this is based on the hours. So we're looking at 225,000 hours versus 360,000 standard quantity. Now, this one here is also 180,000 times two hours standard quantity for variable manufacturing overhead. So we've actually used less hours, so we have a favorable overhead efficiency variance. And then when you net those two together, we still have an overall unfavorable total overhead spending variance. So I hope this helps to explain how to do these calculations. And again, it's really important that you investigate all variances. Your organization may have some sort of threshold that they go by. Maybe $5,000 becomes material for your company or $10,000 or $100,000. I have worked in organizations where $100,000 was the tolerance. They would accept no explanation for something that was less than $100,000. So, you know, it just depends on your organization. And the thing is, is that you want to do the detail, the detail around rates and quantities so that you can see the effect on the overall spending. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll see you on the next video.